Hello and welcome to a video on completing the square part 1 brought to you by the answer series. I've got two examples for you here. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try these two and then we will look at them together. In the first example, I've got x minus 3 all squared equals 16. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So the square root of x minus 3 all squared is x minus 3. The square root of 16 is 4, but be very careful because not only is it 4, it's also minus 4. So that plus minus 4 is vitally important. Remember this equation has an x squared in it, so it's a quadratic equation. And a quadratic equation has two solutions, so watch out for that plus minus 4. If I take the minus 3 to the other side, x is equal to 3 plus or minus 4. In other words, x is 3 plus 4, or x is 3 plus minus 4. So there I get my two solutions. The second example, exactly the same. x plus 1 all squared is equal to 49. When you take the square root on both sides, do not forget it's plus or minus 7. So x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus 7, minus 1 plus 7, or minus 1 minus 7. So there are those two examples. What I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to solve for x by completing the square. And I'm going to use what we did in the previous slide within this example. So the first thing we do when we complete the square is we're going to take the constant term across to the other side. We're then going to take these two terms and we are going to do a process called completing the square. In other words, we're going to write these two terms as a bracket squared. So that's what we want to do. We want to complete the square so that we can write it as a bracket squared. Now remember when you square a binomial, you square the first, twice the product of the two, square the last. Now when you square the first, obviously it's going to be an x to get you back to the x squared. How would I get to the minus 4x? Well, I would take twice the product of these two terms. So x times minus 2 is minus 2x, doubled is minus 4x. But I've got to do this backwards now. So what do I do? I take the minus 4x term, and I'm going to think backwards. I'm going to take half of it, because when I square a binomial, I take twice the product of the two. So I'm going to take half of this and I'm going to square. So what we do when completing the square is we add on half the coefficient of x all squared onto both sides of the equation. So half of minus 4 is minus 2. So I'm going to add on minus 2 squared to both sides of my equation. So this side becomes x minus 2 all squared. Square the first, twice the product of the two, square the last. What do I get on the other side? I get 12 plus 4, in other words 16. And now I've got an example exactly like the previous page. Take the square root of both sides, don't forget plus or minus 4. Take the minus 2 across to the other side and you get your two answers. I've got another example here. I want you to pause the video, I want you to try it yourself and then we'll look at it together. The first thing I do is I take the constant term to the other side. I then need to complete the square. So I take the coefficient of x and I take half the coefficient of x. And if I take half of 3, I get 3 over 2. So what I do is I add 3 over 2 squared to both sides of the equation. 
this then forms a perfect square. So my bracket becomes x, because that's how I get the x squared. It becomes plus 3 over 2, because that's how I get the plus 3 over 2 squared. And when I multiply the two terms together and take twice that, I get the plus 3x. So there I have completed the square. The other side is 1 plus 9 over 4. When I take the square root on both sides, do not forget the plus minus. I can't take the square root of 13, so I just leave it as root 13. The square root of 4 is 2. Take the plus 3 over 2 to the other side, and I get that. And then use your calculator and get your values of x. I have another example for you to do. Again, solve for x by completing the square, and I've given you a hint. Divide through by the coefficient of x squared first. You do not want to complete the square unless you have a term with 1 x squared. So the first thing you're going to do is divide all the terms by 3, and then complete the square. So pause the video, try this one, and then we'll look at it together. Okay, first thing I've done is divide it through by 3 and I have taken the constant to the other side. I'm going to take half the coefficient of x, so half of minus 5 over 3 is minus 5 over 6. So that's what I'm going to add on to both sides and it will be that thing squared. Now if I'm adding on minus 5 over 6 squared, a minus squared is a plus. So I'm simply adding on 5 over 6 squared to both sides. This then is a perfect square. So the x squared is giving me the x, the 5 over 6 squared is giving me the 5 over 6, and the fact that my middle term is minus 5 over 3x is giving me the minus in the middle. Simplify the fractions on this side. Take the square root on both sides. Again, do not forget the plus minus. Take the minus 5 over 6 across, and you get your two answers. The last thing we're going to do in this video is we're going to solve for x by completing the square with our general quadratic equation. So with ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught. So what you're going to do with this one is you're going to do exactly the same as we did in the previous example, except this time I don't have numbers, I've got letters. So I want you to pause the video, I want you to try this one yourself. It's not impossible, it really isn't impossible. So use what we've done before, try it, see what you can do, and then watch the video and we'll do it together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square in this example. To do that, I need to divide every term by a, because I cannot complete the square unless I've got a 1x squared. So divide every term by a, and also take the c across to the other side. So this is what I get once I've divided by a and taken the c across. I now take half the coefficient of x, and half of b over a is b over 2a. And what I do is I add on b over 2a squared to both sides of the equation. These three terms form a perfect square. So the x squared becomes an x inside the bracket. The b over 2a squared becomes a b over 2a inside the bracket. And because my middle term is a plus, that tells me that there's a plus in between the two terms there. On the right hand side, I square the bracket and I write it as one term with a common denominator of 4a squared. I then take the square root on each side. Don't forget when you take the square root that it's plus or minus. The square root of 4a squared 
is 2a and what is on the top I leave with the square root sign and I've simply taken the two terms and I've written them the other way round. The plus b over 2a goes across to the other side and I get a minus b over 2a and then I write it as one fraction and that gives you your quadratic formula. In other words, if you have any quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught, the roots of that equation, in other words the x values, will always be x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So now you know where that formula comes from. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.